Tesla has 100 kilowatt hour battery, an electric skateboard has 2 kilowatt hours, and I have dozens of potatoes. You have seen Casey Neistat on his boosted board. You have seen me trying to build one too. You probably didn't see me do that. I was just trying to shamelessly plug my video. But now I can finally answer humanity's most asked question. Can you power an electric skateboard with potatoes? Here we go. Alright, alright, it's not exactly fast, but honestly, what would you expect from a motor you would find in a toy car? You might also be asking, why is the skateboard going in reverse? And that's a great question. Well, that's because I am a terrible engineer. This is what happens when you try going forward instead. Now, being a nerd myself, I want to talk about the power and all the numbers, so please, use ALT F4 for evacuation unless you are a total nerd yourself and you understand numbers. You should also be caught up with the latest Rick and Morty episodes, otherwise your IQ might not be sufficient enough to grasp the complicated Ohm's law. Alright, with all of the warnings out of the way, let's start with a very controversial fact, which is that the video is actually fake. Well, it's not entirely fake. The skateboard works, it's just that I am powering it with 4 AA batteries. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. And before you start raging, there is a question mark in the title, so, you know, that doesn't explicitly mean it's running on potatoes. It could be, and, you know, it could be. Okay, I'm starting to sound like a lawyer. It was a dick move on my part, but hear me out. It really could be running on potatoes. The motor is running on 6 volts at 400 milliamps, so that's less than 2.5 watts. I mean, phone charging takes more power than that. So then why didn't I just use potatoes? Well, they couldn't even deliver this little power. I found out that cooked and salted potatoes actually perform the best, unlike in any video game where salty potato teammates are generally regarded as dead weight, at best. Anyways, by slicing potato into 8 parts, each part could provide around 1.5 milliamps and about 0.7 volts. Not both at the same time, however, which is very important, because when drawing the 1.5 milliamps, the voltage drops to around 0.01 volts, or that's as low as my multiwinner went. All in all, I would need about 500 potatoes. That's quite a lot, but you know, 500 is not that bad. But you need to realize that I would have to cook all 500 potatoes, that I would need to cut each one into 8 parts, and I would need one zinc and one copper electrode for each of those pieces, which is 8000 electrodes altogether. Now that is the actual problem. So that's why I made the clickbait title instead. You know, I haven't really found any plans for a high power potato battery, unsurprisingly I suppose, but if you have any simple way, just leave it in the comments. I would like to return to this project one day. Well, with the potatoes out of the way, let's talk about a gearbox. As most of my projects, it's 3D printed, because power tools are loud and scary. Also expensive, and also I'm not sure if they would help with making gears. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. Anyways, uh, the gear ratio on this one is 3300 to 1. The DC motor has output about 20,000 RPMs, according to its specifications at least, 
but it's also supposed to be run at 3 volts and not at 6, so the RPMs are somewhat questionable. And the wheel is 60 centimeters in diameter, so if you do some math, 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 1, that's 3, quick maths! Uh, you will find that it's slow. Yeah, no shit. Okay, that's going to be it for today. Please leave a comment suggesting what I should build next. And subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, my Twitter account is really sad. I have like three followers and on top of that one of them is fake. You know, makes me wanna cry how pathetic that is. So please follow me. And yeah, that about wraps it up. See you for now.